what's going on traders welcome back to another video i hope you guys are having an amazing day today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic actually a lot of people are asking what is happening with the stock market for example right now if you see nasdaq drop from 14,200 all the way to 12,400 then it quickly recovered it has this double bottom recovery and now it looks like it is pulling back a little bit but a lot of stocks that are in the nasdaq hasn't recovered even by 10%, 20%. It looks like what happened was that some of the stock recovered really quick, but some of the stock didn't recover. They stayed where they are. And some of the stock start to recover a little bit and actually dropped by 50%, 60%, 70%, depending on what type of investment that you've been having. So this is sometimes very frustrating, especially a lot of these stocks are trading at their support area. If they break below that support area, it's gonna be a big problem for example let's see palantir technologies this is a great company for the last two months this stock has been traded in the price range between 20 dollars at most to 25 dollars right now it is trading at its support area sometimes you might think what if nasdaq keeps pulling back what will happen to the stocks they haven't recovered quite well and at the same time they are actually trading at the support area very important question and a lot of people actually trade highly on a margin and when this happens margin call keeps coming and you have to sell at the lows to cover your margin and you're gonna be in a bigger trouble and losing money every single day even though nasdaq is creating all-time high your portfolio is creating all-time low so this is what i want to talk about today i'm sure you guys are gonna enjoy this video with that let's get started welcome traders thank you for taking time to watch this video please do not forget to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel it will help us big time so today we are talking about these stocks that are literally trading the same way the past two months i can give you a lot of different examples but before talking about these things i really want to share a video with you by peter lynch how do you overcome situations like this and how do you handle a lot of uncertainty fear and speculation in the market i'm sure you guys are going to enjoy this video with that, stay tuned. <laughs> Excuse me. Is a lot of times people buy on the basis the stock has gone down this much. How, you know, how much further can it go down? I remember when Polaroid went from 130 to 100. People said, "Here's this great company, great record." But ever gets below 100, you know, just buy every share. You know, and it did get below 100. A lot of people bought on that basis, saying, "Look, it's gone from 135 to 100. It's not 95. What a buy!" Within a year, it was 18. And this is a company with no debt. I mean, this is a company that was just so overpriced, it went down. Uh, I did the same thing in my, uh, I think my first or second year of Fidelity. Kaiser Industries had gone from $26 a share to 16. I said, how much lower can it go? It's 16. So I think we bought one of the biggest blocks ever on the, New York, on the American Stock Exchange of Kaiser Industries at 14. I said, you know, it's gone from 26 to 16. How much lower can it go? Well, at 10, I called my mother and said, Mom, you're going to... Uh, Look at this Kaiser Industries. I mean, how much lower can it go? It's gone from 26 to 10. <laughs> well, it went to 6, it went to 5, it went to 4, it went to 3. And uh, now I under fortunate this happened rapidly. I would probably be still caddying or uh, be a bit of working at the stop and shop, but I, it happened fast. So I was able to, this, this was compressed. But, uh, and at 3, I figured out, you know, there's something very wrong here because Kaiser Industries owns 40% of Kaiser Steel, they own 40% of Kaiser Aluminum, they own 32% of Kaiser Cement. They own Kaiser Broadcasting, they own Kaiser Santa Gravel, Kaiser Engineers, they own Jeep, they own business after business, and they had no debt. Now, I learned this very early. This might be a breakthrough for some people. It's very hard to go bankrupt if you don't have any debt. It's, it's tricky. Some people can approach that. It's a, real, it's a real achievement. But they had no debt, and the whole company at three was selling at about $75 million. At that point, it was equal to buying one Boeing 747. I said, there's something wrong with this company selling for $75 million. I was a little premature at 16, but uh, I said, everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser's Mint, they passed out shares in Kaiser Lunum, they passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel, they sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. And, but if you didn't understand the company, if you're just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16, and then it got to 10, what would you do when it went to nine? What would you do when it went to eight? What would you do when it went to seven? This is the problem that people have, is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it, then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. Do you flip a coin? Do you walk around the block? 
you know, what do you do? Psychiatrists that haven't worked so far. I've never seen them running in the, the, the psychological psychiatry fund. I've never seen list listed for the uh, for the SEC to make it through as a mutual fund. So I, they haven't seemed to help. Uh, I've tried prayer. That hasn't worked. The uh, the uh, so if you don't understand the company, you have this problem when they go down. Uh, eventually, they always come back. Uh, this one is uh, this one doesn't work either. Uh, people think. Uh, RCA just about get back to its 1929 high when General Electric took it over. Uh, a lot of double knits never came back. Remember those beauties? Uh, uh, floppy disks, Western Union. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, people saying it'll come back. Well, it doesn't have to come back. Uh, here's another one you hear all the time. It's $3. How much can I lose? I've had people call me up saying, I'm thinking of buying the stock at 3 How much can I lose? Well, again, you, you may need a piece of paper for this, but... If you put, uh, if you and if you put twenty thousand dollars in a stock at fifty, or your neighbor put twenty thousand at full, at fifty into the stock, and you put twenty thousand dollars in at three, and it goes to zero, you lose exactly the same amount of money, everything. And people say it's three. How much can I lose? Well, if you put a million dollars on it, you can lose a million dollars. Just the fact that stock. This is the only. This may be a reason to research a stock. The fact that stock is three down from a hundred, doesn't mean you should uh, buy it. And in fact, short sellers, people that really make money in stocks, they don't short Walmart, they don't short Home Depot, they don't short the great companies, Johnson Johnson. They short stocks down from 80 to 7. They'd like to short it at 16 or 22, but they, they figured out at 7 that this company is going to go to zero. They just haven't blown taps on this thing yet. It's going to zero. And they're, they're selling it short at 7, they're selling it short at 6, at 5, at 4, at 3, at 2, at 1 and a quarter. And you know what? To sell something short, you need a buyer. Somebody has to buy the damn thing. And you wonder, who's buying this thing? It's these people saying, it's three. How much lower can it go? You know, the, uh, the, uh... I hope you got the message. I apologize for the quality. This was recorded 20 years back, but it's still very powerful. But moving forward, this drawback is going to make you a stronger investor. Someone who really understand where to enter the market, where to exit the market, what strategy that you have. For example, if you ask me, a lot of times on my video, I have recommended when you buy a stock, usually buy at a support area for example one of them is palantir technology another one is ccib people are getting frustrated with ccib for example right now it is trading at 19 dollars in 21 cents literally this stock is trading at a support area if it breaks below that most likely we're gonna see 16 dollars even lower than that and the same thing goes with plaque power right now it's trading at 25 dollars in 40 cents anytime it can break below that and potentially we can see plaque power at twenty dollars even lower than that fifteen eighteen dollars now it could be a big buying opportunity but the question we have in our mind would plaque power recover back to seventy five dollars that is the most important question i know because i feel the same way and you can talk about jumia jumia right now is trading at twenty nine dollars and fifty cents this stock at some point was trading around seventy dollars and right now it is actually trading on the support area any time it breaks below that, this stock can crumble all the way to $24 and it can potentially go to $20, even lower than that, up to $14, $15. That could be very scary and frustrating. The same thing goes to NEO. NEO right now is at $36.37, especially NEO in the past few days. They actually have a lot of different catalysts. Even this week, they have a couple of catalysts, but it's still this stock keeps dropping on a daily basis and another one people talking about is nano dimensions right now it is trading at six dollar and 66 cents this has happened previously this is a very strong support area for nano dimension for those of you who are planning to enter nano dimension maybe this could be it maybe it can drop to four dollars or two dollars and the scariest thing is could you be able to hold if nano dimension dropped to two dollars or four dollars Sometimes that can be very scary and frustrating at the same time. I'm not trying to spread fear, but I'm just talking about what a lot of people are feeling at this moment because I feel it in some of the investment that I did. For example, I own a lot of Jumia. I own Palantir. I have nano dimension, but my average price is really good. But on Jumia and Palantir, I'm kind of scared a little bit, but I have a very strong conviction with these stocks. My plan is to hold these stocks for the next five years four years and i know for a fact they're going to be way better than where they are today 
and every time they drop actually will give me a better opportunity to average down and accumulate more shares so one thing the stocks have in common these are growth stocks they have grown more than 100 percent 200 percent some of them grown by a thousand percent only in the last 12 months so this was expected at some point but nobody expected when this will come and we were not prepared for it and we got bombarded accidentally sometimes you always have to do a stop loss so you can potentially lose maybe up to five percent not 40 50 percent that could really destroy your portfolio for example let's talk about nano dimension let's see that i want to buy nano dimension right now why would i want to buy right now the first thing is it is at a very strong support area so if i buy nano dimension right now what i would do is that i would put my stop loss maybe at five dollar eighty cents but if it bounce above it i can simply buy back at the same price because there is another resistance area at six dollar and sixty cents when you break a support area when you come back that support area is going to act like a resistance area let's say it keeps dropping and went all the way to four dollar and 40 cents then i can still buy back nano dimension actually at a better discounted price and the second thing that i do sometimes these stocks run up so quick and we don't want to miss any money on the table so the best thing that i would do usually i would put a trailing stop loss it could be five percent it could be ten percent it could be three percent depending on where i bought it for example if i bought black power previously when it was trading around 25 dollars there was a momentum so what i would do is that once black power reached certain areas maybe it could be maybe it could be 26 27 dollars then i can set my trailing stop loss even though drop five percent i'm not going to lose a lot of money because my initial investment was at 25 dollars but the day i put money on black power maybe i can go to 22 dollars and put a stop loss if black power didn't go the way i anticipated then i can trigger a sale at 22 dollars and i will prepare for another good entry point but if it keeps creating higher highs and higher lows then i can put five percent ten percent depending on how much profit you want to make these things are very small details in the stock market not a lot of people talk about it but they have high importance in investors especially new investors was never done this let's say i put about 10 percent or seven percent and the trade went off around 60 dollars after that i don't really care if black power goes to 200 dollars 300 dollars i'm not even going to come back and watch it because i know in my heart that is extremely overvalued so this has to be clear i actually learned it in a hard way but it helps big time so overall my idea is right now when you see all the stocks that have dropped massively there is palantir there is cciv there is matterport a great company there is jumia there is neo nano dimensions a lot of them sun power sunrun arrival nara northern genesis all the stocks has been beaten down fubo tv open door mp materials so what i would do is that i'm gonna do a research on the stocks and see which one is a quality company that has a potential to 10x 5x maybe the next five years 10 years and put my money there because I know eventually they're gonna come back. Some of the companies for sure, they're gonna go bankrupt. They're gonna go to $1, $2. And as much as possible, try to avoid those companies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one.